like the worst of it is definitely over so today I'm gonna start putting Uma back together put the solar panels back on uh, bend the sails back on and then if there's still any wind uh, take off and sail back to Grand Guave Someone left a comment about how fear is an emotion um, and so it's not really real, but danger's real, something like that. And so it's just all about eliminating danger. You know, there's, there's danger of, of halyards slapping and chafing. There's danger of your anchor road chafing. There's danger of loose things on deck flying off. Um, there's danger of, of sailcloth ripping or, or sails flapping. So if you can eliminate as many of the actual real dangers as possible, then um, the only thing left is, is kind of an artificial fear that, you know, you just get over. Um, you know, you stay calm because that's kind of the only emotion that's acceptable. The trees will bloom and eyes will melt. Everything up here on deck looks like it held up just fine. Uh, I've got some bilge hose. Uh, which is flexible and, and very durable and then kind of zip tied back so it doesn't uh, move and then the rope coming underneath it uh, no chafe didn't uh, didn't look like it bothered the rope at all uh, and then on this side I added just another little piece of chafe gear around this uh, metal fitting where the chain goes down into the deck this looks a little overkill but it's just to take up the slack uh, most of this is just slack wrapped around here they didn't flex at all. Even during the worst of the uh, the storm, I went underneath and like put my hand on them, and they weren't flexing at all. So that was uh, very relieving. And then there's not a whole lot of distance between uh, the the chafe gear and here, so the rope doesn't stretch a whole lot. So even like here, there's no chafe at all where it was rubbing on its on the own on its own rope. So that buoy is marking the um, the mantis location, the anchor location. And also it's attached to the uh, retrieval line. So when I bring the boat up to that later on today, hopefully I'll be able to hook something on and winch it out. The rain continued on and off all day, but there was very little wind. First on the list was to start making power again. The trees will bloom. have solar power back yes not much it's pretty overcast we're only getting in like half an amp at 40 volts or what do we got yeah, about 50 watts which isn't bad I'll take what I can get 50 watts is better than zero watts <laughs> So, main sails back up, head sails back up, solar panels are back up, and now all I have to do is figure out a way to pull the Mantis back up. Um, I've got an idea and I hope it works, so uh, let's try it out. Okay, so we've got both anchor lines coming through, and then they're just going all the way back to the main winches. I'm gonna grind on each one by one and um, hopefully I'll make it all the way to the chain. And then if I need to add a main halyard or something to haul up the last bit, I'll do that too. Some nights I'm having a hard time keeping my head up. 
All right, well the easy part's over. I made it to the chain. Theoretically, we've got 50 feet of chain. I'm in 20 feet of water and it's about 30 feet from the bow back to the main winches. So, technically, once the chain reaches the main winch as I'm grinding, it means that the anchor will be pulled out of the mud. Then it's just a matter of getting it up on deck. But once it's up out of the mud, I'm gonna drop the rockna and back down on that so at least we're not moving hoist the mantis up on deck, and then pull the rock up, and then we'll be on our way. Hopefully this works, fingers crossed. Some nights I'm having a hard time keeping my head above the water. Cold breath, I cannot stand up too much weight on my shoulders. Messed up, I wanna stay together, but I need someone who's holding. And oh, I have someone who's holding tiring. when you call it. Well, we are definitely free. We're about 20 meters away from where the anchor is supposed to be set now. Um, which means... Which means I guess it's time to set the rock now before we drift too far. That ought to do it. Now I just need to figure out how to get this anchor back up. The last step was to use the spinnaker pole and main halyard to lift the anchor the final 20 feet up on deck. The whole process took about 45 minutes and worked quite well. Well, I got it out. <laughs> um, pretty freaking muddy there's some really solid clay down there um, as you can see the uh, the trip line whatever you want to call that thing hoisting line where I tied it on at the top fouled around the anchor but uh, it, that doesn't really seem to bother it too much as long as the chain isn't fouled around which it you know it wasn't um, you know that doesn't matter it just got squished into the mud with everything else so yeah it's out we're swinging on the rock net again Feels pretty good knowing that that's the last thing I needed to do before uh, being able to leave. Oh, and the wind picked up. Oh, it feels so nice. All right, before I finish cleaning the anchor off, I just wanted to show you guys this. Check this out. This is what the bottom is made up of. It is like the thickest, gooeyest, densest clay no wonder it held so well this stuff is like the best holding you can get for an anchor uh this is uh underneath about two or three feet i'd say of uh, much finer thinner mud that like doesn't hold anything uh, when i dove on the anchor the first time i could barely find it because it just kind of it settled into that mud but look at this stuff uh, yummy it's perfect great holding here yuck all right finally got the mantis slashed down on deck i'll take it apart later uh, I've got all the anchor road and chain sitting here in the cockpit locker. Put that away later. Um, kind of waiting for the wind to shift and pick up so I can sail out of here. And then uh, sail back to Grand Guave where I can anchor and finish putting, putting everything back together on the boat. Um, the batteries are still pretty much drained. They're at like 25%, so I won't be using the motor at all. Uh, which shouldn't be a problem. I've sailed in and out of here and I've sailed in and out of Grand Guave. So um, I'm just waiting for the wind to pick up. It just picked up, but it's coming exactly where I need to go and the channel's too narrow to tack so I'm really gonna have to wait until it shifts. Insane, sometimes it feels like I'm just dancing on the border. Slow and steady Together, baby. Slow and steady. You, I would be lost around the corners. Steady. I've got all day to go six miles. I don't really care if it takes me a week to get there honestly. I'm quite comfortable out here on the water. I think that's what a lot of people don't get. They wonder what we do when there's no uh, there's no wind and we're just bobbing around in the ocean. But for us, it's kind of the same as just being on anchor. I mean, everything we have, we have on the boat. So whether we're on anchor or out at sea, it's the same thing. We eat, we sleep, we do laundry, we read a book, play a game, edit videos, read more books, play more games, sleep some more, eat some more. It doesn't really matter where we do it, honestly.
looks like I'm gonna have to find another way out. The next morning, I went ashore to see how things looked on land. The driveway was too flooded to get out, so I took a quick ride down the beach to a neighbor's house who let me cut through his backyard. So behind me, uh, way back here, is the bay that I was anchored in for the hurricane. Um, it's near the town of Petit Guave. And I just tried going up and over the mountain to make it back there uh, and see how they fared on land, but the bridge is washed out. Um, and there's a, there's a lineup of traffic waiting for them to put the bridge back together so they can all cross and go through. Um, Yeah, it's the only road in that I know of, and it's uh, it's completely backed up, so I uh, I couldn't make it there. So I'm gonna go back and uh, see what it looks like in the other direction. It had been two days since the rain stopped, so most of the flood water had drained already. What I saw was mostly fallen trees and mud left behind by all the rain. The majority of the damage, however, was done to the far west tip of Haiti, the very part blocked until the bridge was rebuilt. Until then, aid was being supplied by air and sea. Thank you guys so much for watching this step, and thank you all who donated and supported the aid efforts in Haiti. We'll see you next week, but until then, cheers. This is how you rest while solo sailing in the rain without autopilot. It's relaxing yet efficient. <laughs>